Surviving Infidelity The Epiphany of Being Single My wife left me and started shacking up with some guy. I was devastated. I gained 50 pounds depressed, all that. But a year after she left, it was like had an epiphany. I don't have to have a career to buy her a house. I wake up at 9 a.m. or 10 when I want. Some days I work out, go run, go out to eat, then drive two towns over for a milkshake, then go home and play video games after I go shopping, and I still have money. I don't have to work 40 hours. I don't have to be in debt. So, I quit my job and started a business, sold my house and paid off my credit cards. Moved back home with my dad, and now I keep all my money. I buy those cutting edge Nike shoes, I have a huge TV, I work twice a week on average now. I thought the world was ending when she left me. But it was a silver lining. I'm glad she left as I was working so hard to please her and buy her stuff. And she left me for a Starbucks manager, but truthfully, I'm glad she left. I'm glad she moved on and left me to just do whatever I please. The initial pain can fade and you can just move on and live like me if you want. A divorce isn't the end of the world, just the end of abuse. My marriage failed because it was phony, now I'm free from having to prop up this phony image. Now for the top comments. Every guy with kids and house and putting in 20 years in marriage, is envying you right now. You got out of that snake pit easy. Hey, I would just like to state for the record that I, as the wife and woman who was betrayed, I did not ask for a dime of anything from him. I told him he could keep the house or sell it, didn't care nor want a profit of it, not worried about anything else, see your kid when it's convenient, otherwise please just leave me the hell alone. I agree, I believe the system is flawed for men more than women, but even with that, not all of us are evil and money hungry. I'd be content to live in a cardboard box under a bridge, money doesn't fix or buy happiness. This is me. 19 years. May I ask how old are you and your ex? Also, I assume you didn't have kids? Also did you have to pay alimony? No alimony. I'm 29, I forget how old she is, I think 26 or 27, I think she was born in 93 or 94. I can only remember her birthday since it's the same as my mother's. She tried to get alimony though. Alimony is usually only payable when one of the partners doesn't work. The usual situation is a stay-at-home mom, who takes care of the children. While stare by state dependent, it's one year of alimony for every three years of stay-at-home mom. I didn't hear any children, so there likely wouldn't be any justification for stay-at-home. Therefore, no alimony. Good on you dude. That said, what milkshake is worth a two towns over trip? Now for the next story. Wife cheated with her best friend's husband. Married six years. We were so happy we started looking for our dream home. I make very good money, but the home she wanted for us was very expensive. But I knew I could get that house if I worked harder than I already was. She really wanted this house to be the home we raised our kids in, we don't have any kids yet, but we're planning on trying soon. So, I start working longer hours, working on more projects, and building a business with a college friend of mine. During this time, my relationship with my wife started to fizzle out. We became less intimate, and every time I got home, I just wanted to lay down and sleep. I was burning myself out, but she was my motivation. A couple of months go by like this and she starts acting differently. She's getting irritated by anything I do, on her phone 24-7, leaves the house for hours on end without me knowing where she is. I start trying to put in more effort to be more emotionally available, but she shuts me down at every turn. No, I don't want to go have dinner, I already have something planned with my friends. I can't go on a weekend trip because I have to fill in for a colleague, mind you, she works part time and I make roughly 90% of our income. I'm already stressed enough as it is, especially with my business with my friend that's really taking off, given COVID. Meanwhile at home, my wife is acting really suspicious. Soon enough I notice she is getting really comfortable with her best friend's husband. They're really touchy with each other and flirt way too much for my liking. I don't really think much of it. She's always been like that, flirty. Well, next thing you know my wife's ex-best friend calls me and says she needs to speak to me about something very urgent. I tell her I'm busy but she insists. I meet up with her, and she tells me my wife and her husband had been having an affair for only who knows how long. I refuse to believe it, but she shows me proof. Exts, photos, voice notes. A video of them entering a hotel together. They even had intercourse in my home. My freaking home. 
I remember one day when I went home, and saw what I suspected to be comb stains on my bed sheets. The wife said she spilled some milk while watching a TV show. I asked my wife's sex friend how she got all this, and she says she checked her husband's phone and found the exts, then started investigating so she had enough proof in their divorce. This was not the first time he cheated on her and she was done. I go home to my wife and I can see that she is uneasy. Probably because she knows what's coming. I confront her about the affair and she begins to cry, saying it was a mistake, it was just intercourse, and we weren't as loving as we used to be. Then she proceeds to blame me for it, saying if I paid more attention to her than to my job, none of this would have happened. Her blaming me for working so hard to get her dream home. I snapped. I'm not proud of this, but I got so infuriated by what she had just said that I grabbed her by the neck and held her against the wall. Fortunately, I didn't do anything else to her and just left the house to gather my thoughts. I sent her a text telling her she'd better be gone when I got back. She refuses and says we need to talk. I go back to the house and start packing her stuff for her, with her yelling at me to stop the entire time. I call her mother to come pick her up. When she arrives, she manages to convince my soon-to-be ex-wife to leave me alone for a few days. It's been less than two days and I'm still at my wit's end. I got physical with my wife and nearly hit her. And I'm having a hard time coming to grips with the fact that this is actually happening. Yesterday, I went to her affair partner's house looking for a fight. The coward locked himself in his house and called the cops. I know I can't recover from this, but I just can't shake the rage I'm feeling right now. Soon to be ex-wife keeps calling, texting, and even tried to come by the house, and it's only making me angrier. I wish I could cause both of them just as much pain as they have caused me. But there's nothing I can do other than try to move on. Any advice on how to cope? Now for the top advice. Begin the divorce process and go no contact with her. Take a mini vacation and tell her to contact you through your lawyer. Talk with your friends, go to a therapist if you need to, but please leave this wife who blames you for cheating. Don't be physical because you might lose money for that because even a penny is more worth than your wife now. Record your wife's affair, go to an attorney and get her served. If possible, have intercourse with her best friend. I was thinking it, but I wasn't gonna say it. One last piece of advice. This is a scenario where all communication about the divorce needs to be through lawyers. There's no reason to talk when you're not considering reconciliation. You've realized you can't be rational right now. Lawyer up. Tell him it's not a good idea for you and your wife to be in the same room or communicate. Let him handle everything. Don't argue with his advice. Not only is this the best route for you safety-wise, but it is also the route that will bother her the most. I know you'll feel urges to vent to her. To tell her how much you hate her. To tell her how much you loved her. But there's nothing she could say that will make you feel better, and there's nothing you can say that will hurt her more than just ghosting from her life as if she's not worth talking to. Because she's not. Whatever you do, don't let your anger get the best of you, no matter how much you want to harm her or get at him. Best to think before being impulsive. I know that's easier said than done, but the relationship is over. Divorce is the outcome, but being in jail for something stupid would be her moral victory. So move forward as best you can and best of luck. Next story is titled. Feels like real life invasion of the body snatchers. So I've tried typing out a post a couple times now, wanting others opinions on what they think happened and it ends up being far too long. Even for this subreddit. When I read through. It seems so obvious as to what happened. Yet some days I still question if I was crazy and I pushed her away with my accusations. It's hard for me to imagine her ever cheating, it seemed so out of character, but then again, she began doing a lot of things that were atypical behavior for her. I'm sure that eventually I will post the whole soap opera-esque crap show, as I would like to hear some feedback just for my own peace of mind. Long story short, I never caught her red-handed, I wish I would have found this subreddit sooner. Some of you are truly cunning and I realize now that's what it takes to catch a cheater, but there were tons of red flags. Eventually I couldn't ignore the red flags or give her the benefit of the doubt any longer. She changed so dramatically in 6 to 12 months before getting divorced that I barely even recognized her. I felt like I was living with an imposter. Like my wife of 13.5 years and partner for the past 17 had been replaced. I still look for the moment of when she vanished. The closest I can get is when she met a certain person, there was a sudden change. They were either a bad influence or they were exactly what I thought they were. The affair partner. 
I still don't understand how someone can cause so much pain and not give a damn about their actions. It's just so selfish. How they can tear apart a family and destroy a relationship of 17 years over someone who is just a friend. Even with all that said, I miss the woman that my ex-wife was. I miss the life we had, especially my kids and the potential future. I'm a first responder and so my schedule doesn't allow for me to see them except on my days off. I wasn't a perfect husband, but I was slash I'm a damn good man, and I always tried to make her and our kids my top priority. It's so hard and frustrating to see her get everything she wants. Even the kids have become a low priority since the divorce and it breaks my heart. I have trouble not thinking about it and her most days, and it still grinds my gears when mutual friends or family don't seem to give a hoot about it. It reminds me that they never cared about me. It feels like regardless of situation, they would have been right by her side. Either she would be brave for staying, or brave for walking away, shaking my damn head. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But for all you fellow posters and lurkers who have shared over half their life with one other person and had them abandon ship, my heart goes out to you. I don't mean to diminish anyone being cheated on, it just feels a bit more earth shattering when you have so much invested. This crap has given me some serious baggage and I honestly don't know if I ever will truly recover. Right now I see no point, I gave it a good go, and between my job and my kids, I have no time left for anyone else. Plus, cheating is so prevalent and easy nowadays, so what's the point? Now for the top comments. To my experience, those just a friend people are never just a friend. I have long since discovered that if my gut is telling me they are something else, then they are something else, and there's exactly zero need for further proof thereof. Check out the 4 M's of infidelity, why cheaters can't leave their affair partners online. This article will probably ring some bells for you. Also, check out Dr. Romani and Surviving Infidelity on YouTube. Both channels deal with narcissism and how to deal with a narcissistic relationship. Remember, the affair was not your fault. You deserve better and will do better. Your kids need at least one parent that is responsible parent. Hope you are getting individual counseling for yourself. If you can, lean into friends and family for support, the ones that are supportive, that is. There are good people out there, don't be so hard on yourself. You deserve better and will do better, good luck. I could have written this post myself, word for word. My ex-husband was my very best friend and the love of my life, until that guy died and whatever pathetic great value brand knockoff took over his body. One of the worst parts of this is that, it makes you question your sanity. Like, were they this scumbag all along and I was just blinded by unconditional love? Did I hallucinate all the great years together? Were the last two decades of my life a lie? It's a real mind screw. I'm sorry you've had to go through this too. It always feels like that because the mask is off. Anytime there is a shift in behavior, that's a huge indication. It's all cliché, irritable, distant, fights over nothing, grievances from years past, being secretive with the phone, maybe new underwear slash new clothes, new grooming habits, etc. Sounds like you were successfully gaslit and never got the evidence that most of us end up getting, so you're torturing yourself wondering. I wanted to respond to another part of your post. I miss the woman my ex-wife was. You mean who you thought she was? The image versus reality. Now for the last story. Bouncing between hope and anger. My wife and I have been married for almost 23 years, 27 years together. Last year was tough on us both, being isolated from friends and family. She became unhappy with our lifestyle, which turned into becoming unhappy with our relationship. We both went through a small depression in the fall and drifted apart. She started a new full-time job in November. She's a very friendly person, and one of her male co-workers interpreted that as being interested in him, he had been single and alone for around three years. He began flirting with her, she ate it up and reciprocated. Their relationship progressed from flirting to coffee, to exting, to her going to his place one afternoon and fooling around, her words, got naked, or lonely, mid-January. I found messages on her phone arranging to go back to his place before work and have intercourse, January 17th. I confronted her. We had a long talk, and she agreed to stop the affair and let him know. We tried working on our relationship. She never stopped contact with him outside of work. Mid-February, I asked her to stop contacting him altogether, she pushed back, but again told him that they were done. Valentine's weekend, we rented a hotel room and had a romantic weekend. My hope for our relationship was high. Then she moved out for three days, needing time alone to figure things out. 
She came home on Friday, saying she wanted to stay married but continue the affair. I compromised my boundaries, saying no to the affair but allowing them to stay in contact, but not meet outside of work. Fast forward to two weeks ago, she says she loves me, but is not in love with me, she's in love with him, she wants her independence and to explore their relationship. She moved out March 13th. We've been in frequent contact, kids, selling house etc., she texts every day, sets up coming over, sends hearts emojis. I still love her and want her to come home, with conditions of course. But I'm angry at her for not wanting to fight for a 27 year relationship, not putting us first. I don't want to be the backup plan, but I get happy every time I get a text or a call or see her. She says she wants to stay friends, but I can't be friends with someone who hurt me so much, but I want to give her time and to want to come home. Am I being a chump here? Now for the top comments. Yes, you are being a chump and doing the pick me dance. Nothing but truth there. In order to reconcile a relationship after infidelity, these things are mandatory, no compromise here. 1. All contact with a fair partner must stop, if employed with said a fair partner, they need to find other employment slash quit the job. 2. They must get into individual therapy to figure out why their character is so broken and fix it, and figure out their real whys to doing what they did. OP, there is no excuse for a spouse or partner to cheat, if there are issues in the marriage or the partner doesn't want to be married, you separate slash divorce first then pursue other relationships. You don't cheat and then decide to leave the marriage slash relationship. Or if you want to work on it, you go to therapy. 3. All phone, email, social media passwords slash usernames shared. I highly recommend no social media. 4. They must help their betrayed spouse slash partner through it all by providing a timeline, being open and honest about what happened, and give full disclosure. 5. The wayward spouse must be completely transparent about everything and never lodge, even a white lie of any kind. Exception to this would be a gift or good surprise of some sort for their partner. You allowed her to continue contact with the affair partner? She never stopped, so there was no reconciliation there at all. Get an STD test because what she has told you may not be, probably isn't, the full truth and they did indeed have intercourse. She is also in the affair fog right now and there is nothing you can do to win her back, every issue, flaw, etc. of you, is magnified by her twisted scrambled brain right now. Even if she is texting you with love emojis, that may be love bombing for things to go well into her favor, not yours, look up grey rock now. Do not engage in any communication with her now outside what you must have communication with her. Lawyer up and file, if you are in an at-fault state, use the adultery against her. Note: In civil cases the mere ponderance of the evidence, her living with the affair partner or the affair partner coming over, is enough proof for adultery. You are also being a doormat, focus on you now. She is your enemy, don't let those love emojis fool you, they are just symbols and distraction there. You pull the plug first. It's the only thing that might jar her out of her fair fog mind. It may not. That fog can linger for years. Focus on you, what you would want to do without her, what you can do now without her, exercise, go to therapy to help with your own self-esteem in this betrayal. Focus on your kids. And review all financial information to be sure she hasn't committed financial infidelity here too. Harsh truths, but they are truths, thank you. I am in solo therapy. I'm working on myself and focusing on kids. Early days yet, but I'm heading in the right direction. She is keeping her options open whilst sampling the grass to see if it's greener. You need to respect and start loving yourself and do what is best for you. Remember, you are the most important person you will ever know. Do what is best for you. Thank you. Intellectually, I know what she is doing and that this is the end. Feelings take a bit longer to catch up. I am focusing on myself and kids, am in therapy and am catching up with old friends. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.